Welcome to Electro Online. Let's here quickly review what happens when you have a force, an oscillating force affecting the oscillatory motion. In the first case when there's no damping, in the second case when there's damping. So we have a force that has a constant times a co the cosine of the omega sub d. Now the omega sub d is the angular frequency of the driving force, which may be different and most likely will be different from the angular, the natural angular frequency of the oscillatory motion of the, uh, of the simple harmonic oscillator. So let's look at the damped or the undamped case first. So we can then say that the d squared x dt squared equals minus k over mx plus the driving force. Now notice that if we move this over to the left, it becomes positive. Then it means we end up with these two terms of the equation. Of course, this term is no longer there because we don't have any damping. And then we add to that the driving force, which is an oscillatory driving force, of course, which changes, the magnitude changes as the frequency of the oscillation changes. So this is the general solution to this differential equation. We're only interested in this portion right here because these are the natural frequencies that are there without the driving force. And then we can see that the amplitude caused by the driving force affecting the oscillation, it's equal to the magnitude of the driving force, the maximum magnitude, divided by the mass, divided by omega sub naught squared minus omega sub d squared. Now omega sub naught again is the square root of the, of the, is the square root of k over m. And omega sub d is the angular, the angular frequency of the driving force, whatever that is. And then notice, since it's an undamped case, there's no damping on the motion, if these become equal to one another, the denominator goes to zero, the amplitude goes to infinity. Of course, in the real world, that can never happen, but it can get quite large if there's no damping and the driving force has roughly the same frequency as the natural frequency of the oscillator. In the case that we have damping, then we have this middle term as well. And then if we solve this equation, so that means that we have this on the left side, on the right side we have the, the, the force caused by the driving force. So now let's take a look at the damped case. When we have the damped case on the left side, of course, we have what we have over here. On the right side, we have the term that's caused by the, the oscillatory driving force. We're only interested in the steady state solution. So after a long period of time has gone by, and the natural frequency is kind of being erased, so to speak, by the driving force, we now have an amplitude determined by the driving force, and of course the mass and the spring constant and so forth, times the cosine of omega dt, of course omega d is again the angle of frequency of the driving force, and now we also will have a phase angle, and we'll shift the whole thing in, in phase due to the differential uh, oscillatory motion of the natural frequency, and the frequency of the dam of the of the uh, driving force. So then we calculate the amplitude of the driving force will be the amplitude of the force divided by m times the square root of this. Now notice that we have the same term here as we have over here, except we have an additional term over here. Now this additional term prevents this from going to infinity because there's a damping effect there. Even if these two are equal to one another, you still have this portion in the denominator which, which will prevent the amplitude of going out of control. The phase angle is determined by 90 degrees minus the arctangent of this ratio right here. Remember this is the natural frequency that we have defined. Oh, do we have defined? Yeah, we have defined right here. So this is the driving frequency of the driving force and omega sub d that is the same uh, damping frequency that we calculated in the previous equations you go back to a few videos ago and you can calculate how this is how this is found but that gives you a feel of what the amplitude is when there's no damping what the amplitude is when there's damping including the phase angle and that is how it's done